Hey guys and welcome to Graphic Designer Pro. In this video we are going to be comparing Adobe Illustrator's three best drawing tools. The pen tool, the pencil tool and the curvature tool. We'll explore their pros and cons and where each of them can be used to great effect. So download our free template file from the description below that you can use to follow along with this video and let's head onto the computer now and get started. Okay so here we are in our template file. Like I say you can download this for free from the description below so you can follow along with what we're doing, try these tools out for yourself and see which ones you prefer using. So starting on the left hand artboard here we have some very simple paths that we are going to trace using each of these tools. So starting with the pen tool we can find this over on the left hand toolbar and the keyboard shortcut for that is P on the keyboard and if you haven't already check out our pen tool techniques video where we go into much more detail on how best to use the pen tool. We've got some really easy tech techniques if you don't particularly enjoy using it or you're new to the tool. So this video is more of a comparison as opposed to a deep dive into each of the tools. But we can essentially use this by clicking to plot anchor points and you'll see we get our preview line which is the path that's going to be created and we can click again to create another anchor point to create that path. So very simple to use this. I'm going to hold shift to lock our path line to 45 degree angles but you can see I can create a straight line this way and I'm just basically looking for where this starts to curve and I can plot another anchor point there. And if you watch our pen tool techniques video, we cover two very useful techniques to using this. One is the 90 degree rule and the other is the anchor point technique. In this case, I'm going to use the 90 degree rule. So what I'm actually going to do is press command Z. I'm going to plot this point again, but this time again, still holding shift, I'm going to click and drag and we're going to create these bezier handles and that's going to allow us to create a curved path. So I'll let go and you can see we now have a curving path preview line here. Let's go up to the top of this curve here and I'm going to click and drag to the right this time. We always want to click and drag in the direction that we're creating the path in. So this is roughly matching. I can adjust these handles afterwards as well. It's very easy to do but I'm going to try and just do this in one take. Now you'll notice I've got a black fill being created where we're creating this path. It's always easier to work with a stroke instead of a fill in this kind of thing even if you are creating a fill shape. So I'm going to press shift and X on my keyboard and that's just going to flip our fill to a stroke. I'm going to adjust the parameters of this after anyway. Now I'm going to go to where this comes back down and basically roughly try and eyeball this to align with the second anchor point we created. Again dragging down this time. I'm holding shift every time as well so that I'm locking those bezier handles to 90 degree angles as well. And I may just have to slightly adjust some of these afterwards. You can see this isn't quite aligning at the top there but I can go back and adjust this. I can do this on the fly as well by holding command or control on a PC. You can see my cursor changes to the direct selection tool and I can just go and adjust this one still holding shift and we can get this to hopefully align a bit better. I may just need to adjust this anchor point so still holding command I can actually adjust the position of this anchor point as well which is really useful so we'll go something like that that's looking a bit cleaner and now we can just continue our path so very easy to use doing the same thing here clicking and dragging to the right holding shift and now we get up to this corner here so I still want to click and drag up the way to create the correct curve on the previous segment of the path that we've just created so we'll go something like that again let's just go and slightly adjust this anchor point positioning and the bezier handles and you can see now we're getting this preview line and this isn't what we want we obviously want to create a sharp corner here so a really easy way to stop this is to hold option or that's alt on a pc and just click once on that anchor point and that's essentially going to get rid of the bezier handle on that side of it so now we just have a straight line protruding from it so again i can hold shift let's go down to the bottom and you can see my smart guides are helping me here always make sure you have your smart guides on in this kind of thing so we can get correct alignment. So this is aligning with our first anchor point. So I can click and then just join this back up. And there you go. That was pretty easy to do. It's not absolutely perfect. I could go and adjust this some more, but this has done a pretty good job for a first run. Let's just adjust the stroke weight. We'll put, bump this up to 10 or so just to see this slightly more clearly. And I'm just going to go ahead and change the color as well. So pen tool, very simple to use and we can be very precise with this as well. The next tool we're going to look at is the curvature 
signature tool. So some of you may already be familiar with this, but this can be very useful for taking a little bit of the thought process out of where you plot your anchor points. It's automatically going to create curved flowing lines between anchor points or corner points, as we'll show you. So again, let's start in the bottom corner. I'm going to bump my stroke weight back down to one so we can be a lot more accurate with this. That's another tip that I would recommend. So I'm going to click once and this works in the same way. I've actually plotted an anchor point, although you can see it's actually circular this time. And that's because this is a curve handle and you'll see we don't get any preview line straight away. Now this is a little bit tricky because I'm not able to make sure that this is a straight line. However, if I hold shift, even if I click off to the side here, it's still going to create a perfectly straight line. You're just not seeing that preview line. But now you can see we do get a preview line and depending on where I move my mouse, this is creating a curved path. So like I say, depending on where we plot the anchor points, Illustrator is going to create the path to go through those anchor points, but it's going to optimize it for the cleanest flow through those anchor points, if that makes sense. Now, the only problem here is that it's now creating a curve where we want our straight line. So what we actually need to do is create a corner point instead. So to do that, all I need to do is double click on the anchor point we just made. And you can see now I'm getting a straight preview line. So we can actually create sharp corners as well. If I go up to the top of this curve now and drag away, you can see it's now creating a curved path from there. So I could go down to this side now. And again, let's just click once. If I was to go down here though, you can see the path is changing way back to where I created my last corner point. So this is just going to continually adjust based on the points you plot and how the path is going to flow through those points. So in this case, my best course of action would actually be to double click on the point we just created to create another corner point. And we're essentially just going to try and create another semicircle here. So it's not creating a perfect flowing line through those corner points, technically speaking, but visually this should be all right. Now, again, we're getting to a corner here. So I'm going to double click to create that corner point, hold shift. And you can see this time now that we've got the preview line, you can see that it is locking to that 90 degree angle. The only issue now is that my smart guides aren't working with this. So I'm just going to have to eyeball this and I can always go and adjust this afterwards. Double click again, because we want to make sure that we're creating another corner point. I'm holding shift and you can see that's not going to quite align, but we'll go back to the first point. And because I just clicked once with that first point, if I was to join this back up, it's going to treat that as a corner point and it's going to change the curvature of this path. So again, I want to double click on this to make sure that it's a sharp corner. So as you can see here, we've got these bottom points not quite aligning. I can just grab my direct selection tool though with A on the keyboard, select both of them and click the vertical align bottom shortcut just to make sure that they are aligned. And there we go. We're getting a pretty good result with this as well. You wouldn't really be able to tell that we have corner points being plotted here. It still looks like it's flowing relatively smoothly. So I'm just going to copy the line weight of our previous pen tool path as well. And you can see they both look pretty good. So let's move over to our last example. And that is for the pencil tool. Now, if you've used the pencil tool, you'll know that it's almost impossible to recreate something like we've just created with the pen and curvature tools. Anything this clean, you wouldn't really use the pencil tool with anyway, but we're going to throw it in here to show you where it does have its advantages. So again, it can be found on the left hand side and it normally sits under the shaper tool. So if you're seeing the shaper tool there by default, just click and hold on it and it's the next option down. The keyboard shortcut for it is N as well. And a key part of using the pencil tool is to set your smoothness or fidelity first. So if you double click on the tool itself, you can see we have this fidelity slider. So this is going to basically either smooth out the path that you're creating with your mouse or if it's a graphics tablet, or you can keep it really accurate. So all the little movements you make are going to be recorded into the path, if that makes sense. So let's first do this at the smooth end to showcase this. We'll try and get it as smooth as possible. And I'm just going to go ahead and click OK. And I'm just using a mouse and I've got to be honest, I'm really not very good with using the pencil tool and a mouse. It's much easier with a graphics tablet it, but we can still get some good results with it. So there are a few tips for this. In some cases, I prefer to zoom out a bit so that I've essentially got a smaller distance to cover with my mouse when I'm creating my paths. The other option would be to zoom right in and we just need to take it really slowly to try and be as accurate as we can. And we can also do this in segments. We don't have to do the full path in one movement. So unlike the pen and curvature tools, I'm not just clicking once to plot anchor points. I'm actually clicking and holding and then moving my mouse to create 
a path. So I'm just going to do this. It's going to take a little bit longer. You can see because I've got my smoothness set really high, this has actually created a very straight line here, although it's not at a perfect 90 degree angle, which isn't ideal. But I can just continue on from this. You want to make sure when you're hovering over that you see that small line next to the cursor, and that means that you can just continue this path on. So that's what I'm going to do here. And we'll just speed through this to see what our end result looks like. Now when we get back to the first anchor point here you'll see a small circle next to my icon you'll hopefully see that and that means it's going to close the path that we just created. So this is what we're left with you can see it's not nearly as clean as our other examples but that's always to be expected. With the smoothness turned up though you'll see we don't actually have that many anchor points for how wobbly I was there and that's one thing when we're trying to create simple smooth paths you want to try and use as few anchor points as you can within reason of course still making sure that the shape is being maintained but you can see on our first two examples we really have very few anchor points being used and on our pencil tool we have a lot more and as we'll show you in a second this could be much worse if we were using an accurate fidelity so where you would maybe use the pencil tool is if you actually want something that looks a lot more hand-drawn and organic looking so obviously this looks quite hand-drawn already we could make this even more hand-drawn looking by using a more accurate setting so what I'm going to do is just move this one up here for now and we're going to recreate this again. Let's grab our pencil tool, I'll double click on it and let's this time drag our fidelity slider right down to the accurate side. Click OK and we could really enhance the rough hand drawn look. So I'll start tracing this again and I'm going to just take my time once again. So we'll speed through this and see what we come up with. Okay, so you can see this version is far rougher and you can see just how many more anchor points have been created. So that is one of the drawbacks of this, but it's to be expected when we're going for a much more accurate setting, but it's created a much rougher, more textured look from our path. Now the cool thing about the pencil tool as well is that we can go back over sections if we want to, to try and tidy them up a bit. Just grab my pencil tool again. One thing you want to make sure though is that you are hovering over an anchor point itself so we've got this little asterisk next to our pencil tool cursor but if I'm to hover over an anchor point that will disappear that's what you want to make sure it's doing before you go back over a part of the path so as you can see I've just done this here and we can go in and basically just correct bits if we need to so quite intuitive to use and great for creating something like I say a little bit more hand drawn and rough looking so we're still adhering to the general path that we were tracing quite well but it just looks a lot more organic I quite like doing this with tracing things like text as well. To create a rough looking bit of typography, for example, this can be a good technique to use. Let's move on to some slightly more complex examples though for each tool. We've got an image here that we are going to trace with each of them as well and we'll see how each of them handles it. So again, starting on the left hand side, we're going to start with our pen tool. So P on the keyboard and I'm not going to be incredibly detailed here. I'm just going to get a rough trace of the silhouette. If you're trying this yourself, definitely give it a go going into all of the little details of this silhouette, but I'm going to basically create some smoother paths around this just to create something a little bit more simplified, potentially for use as a logo mark, for example. So what I'm going to do first is just bump my stroke weight down to one point. Again, I want this to be nice and accurate with what I'm trying tracing and in this case with the pen tool I'm going to use our anchor point tool technique so like I say if you've not checked out that pen tool techniques video be sure to do that so you can get a little bit more detail on what we're doing here but I'm just going to roughly plot these points and we'll see how we get on we may need to plot a few more this is how I like to work I'm just plotting my anchor points first and foremost and then I can always go back and adjust it with the anchor point tool so I'm just looking for any changes in direction here and with this beak section here, I want this to actually look a little bit more protruded. So I'm actually going to place the anchor point a little bit further down in this example and we can adjust it from there and I'll keep going around the rest of this. 
Okay, so I've plotted all my anchor points. I'm going to switch to my direct selection tool now. I can do this on the fly with the pen tool still selected by holding option to enable my anchor point tool, but I personally find it easier just to switch to the anchor point tool itself, which is shift C on the keyboard, or you can find it sitting underneath the pen tool from the left hand toolbar. So all I'm doing here is just clicking and dragging on these segments of path to try and get them to curve with the image that we're tracing here. I'm just going to speed through this and we'll see what we end up with. So I've got an example here where I probably need another anchor point to get this to flow well. So I'm just going to hit plus on my keyboard. That's going to enable the add anchor point tool. I'm just going to click on the path and then press A on the keyboard just to reposition this. And then I can go back to my anchor point tool with shift C and now I can go and continue editing the flow of these paths. Here's just another case where I may just need to slightly adjust the positioning of my anchor points, but this is just part of editing paths in general, whether it be the pen tool, curvature tool, or pencil tool. So you're not always going to nail the anchor point placement straight away. In this case, I've definitely not done that. So I'm just having to slightly reposition where they're going. I've gone through this whole thing now, it's definitely not perfect, but if I turn off my template layer now, we can see roughly the finished outcome from tracing this bird silhouette with our pen tool. So it's pretty clean for the most part. There aren't too many anchor points making this up, which is a massive bonus as well. If I flip this to a fill instead, we'll get a better idea of how it's looking. And that wasn't really too difficult to do as well. If we move over to the next example though, let's try and do the same thing, but with the curvature tool. So I'm gonna start from roughly the same point and grab my curvature tool from the left-hand side. The keyboard shortcut for the curvature tool by the way is shift apostrophe. I'm going to just click once where I want to plot my first point. I'm creating a big curve here so the key thing to remember with this technique is that we always need to plot points in the middle of each curved segment. So I'm plotting one in the middle there and then going back to a sharper point here where I double click. Again, let's shift this back to be a stroke instead of a fill. I'm just going to speed through this and we'll see what we come up with. So with the curvature tool as well, it's worth noting that you may have to go back and adjust points. Now this is really easy to do, I don't need to go and switch to any other tools. Simply with it still selected, I can continue this path or I can go back to any previous points and just click and drag on them to reposition them. You can see I need to do this here just to try and get the curve flowing a little bit more accurately for what I want. I can also go and add new anchor points on any previous segments as well, simply just by clicking on the path itself. You'll see my cursor changes and I can then go and reposition any of them. I can also simply delete points with my backspace key and it's not going to create a cut in the path, it's just going to delete that point itself. So it is quite easy to go and adjust curvature paths in this regard. In this case, I think I will need just one more point here to try and get this to flow a little bit more accurately. And now I can just continue on with this path. So you can see in this case, this has actually worked relatively well just by plotting points and just allowing the path to adjust as I plot. I can always go back and adjust this, but I think in this case, this is looking pretty good. So this is another case similar to the last example where you don't really want to focus too much on tracing the image perfectly. It's more important that the flow of the path looks good. So in this case, I'm not really worrying too much about where the silhouette of the bird is. I'm just trying to focus more on the path. I can go and adjust this afterwards as well. Here's a situation that you can run into with the curvature tool where just slight adjustments is really going to change how the path flows. Because we're dealing with quite a straight section as well, it can be quite tricky to position your points correctly. What I always recommend is just to try deleting points, seeing if that helps, if not just repositioning the points that you're working with. So it may be the case that these just need moved around a little bit to help it flow better. I'm just going to try and get this flowing as well as I can. Again, trying not to get too hung up on tracing very accurately. So I'm probably just going to stick with this for this example.
Okay, so in this last section here, you can see again, we've run into a few issues with the flow of the path and it is just a bit of trial and error with the curvature tool. You've really just got to persevere with it sometimes to try and get your paths flowing well. It's definitely much easier to use in shorter segments. I think the longer segments like this, where you have changes in directions, it can be very tricky to get this flowing well. But I'm just gonna keep going through this and trying to tidy this last section up and then it should be finished. So struggled a bit with the last little section there. It certainly wasn't easy to get that right and it's still by no means perfect, but it will do for this example and we can get a better idea of the side-by-side -side comparison here. Let's just flip that as well. Both relatively similar, both very clean in their execution. If I switch to my direct selection tool, you can see I've had to use more anchor points with the curvature tool, but it's still done a relatively good job. I do think the pen tool has a lot of advantages when we want to be more accurate in some of the finer, more detailed sections, but the curvature tool definitely has its uses on the more simplified curving areas of a path. So let's move on to our last example and we'll just quickly do a trace with our pencil tool again let's go with something quite rough looking so I'm just going to stick with my accurate fidelity in this case and we'll just go around this silhouette once again and see what we end up with. Okay, so I've completed my pencil path around this bird and I can already see that it is very, very rough. So if we turn off our template, you can see this more clearly, but still, if you're going for that quite rough hand-drawn look, I don't think this is a bad option to go down. You can see if we zoom in, the edges are much more rough, but it's giving it a completely different aesthetic to the other two, which are much cleaner and more precise. So it really depends on what you're creating and what you feel more comfortable with as well. If I turned the smoothness up on this pencil version, it would obviously give for a much smoother look as well. So it is still possible to use it in these situations. It's really just user preference and what it is you're tracing as well. But that's it for an overview of these three tools and how they compare. Definitely give them all a try and see which ones you prefer using. All right, guys, I'll see you in the next one. If you want to learn more about graphic design, we've put together a free one hour training where you'll discover the top five secrets of successful designers, which saves you the hassle of trying to figure it all out for yourself. We'll be showing you how to immerse yourself in the sector you're designing for, creative thinking and how to spark creativity, what good composition is and how you can achieve it in your designs, how to pick the right colours for your designs, and how to pick the right typefaces for your projects. So if you're serious about levelling up as a graphic designer, then make sure to sign up for the next free webinar. Space is limited and these events always fill up fast because they're significantly better than the information others charge you for and ours is free. The link's in the description, you're not going to want to miss it, I'll see you there.